Good morning. This is a beautiful Wednesday here in Southern Iowa. And today we're going to, I'm gonna uh, do a little tutorial and show you how to make these cute, cute, cute little hand sanitizer holders that uh, are done all in the hoop and with using your embroidery module. And uh, this is the one we're gonna be making today. Um, and this is with marine vinyl. And there's the back, a little lion on the back. And I've made all these others this week. Um, this is also vinyl, but it's a much thinner vinyl, you can see. Much, much thinner. A little lion on the back. So these are all the same design, but I got this file from Tiffany who is the owner and designer at Crashing Waves Embroidery Designs, and I'm gonna give you the link to her website. So if you wanna purchase this file and make some of these, you sure can. Um, thank you so much, Tiffany, for giving me permission to do this tutorial with your design. So I'm gonna be cutting today my vinyl pieces on my scan and cut but you don't have to do that you can just cut a, uh, a piece of vinyl that will fit in your uh, large oval hoop and just be just fine um, and then you'll trim the whole thing when you're done and even the ones that I cut on my scan and cut some of these I did and some I I cut by hand but um, even the ones that I did cut on my scan and cut to begin with I did trim them a little bit when I was finished and the thing about using the scan and cut is that I did save an awful lot of waste on vinyl so um, let's get started I'll show you how to do it so to um, create my SVG file for my scan and cut so that I can cut out my um, hand sanitizer holder and have it all look really nice and have all the smooth edges. I have stitched out step one on my tearaway stabilizer. And I've used two layers, two layers. And I'm going to take this out of the hoop and use a ruler and cut it nice and square. And then I'm going to scan this side and this side into my scan and cut and save them as files in the machine. And then I will cut out down around here and save the outside pocket. There's a little pocket here that the hand sanitizer goes in when you're finished. So you'll have a front, a back, which will be full size pieces. And this has to be reversed or it won't work. So we'll have to have the back and the front and the pocket. So I'll cut that out now and go scan that in and make my files. So I have cut out my stabilizer out way around from my stitching and I'm at my scan and cut and I'm going to load my mat and I'm just using my paper cutting mat um, when I start cutting my vinyl I'll use my fabric cutting mat um, so now let's see we want to scan so I'm going to touch scan and I want scan to cut data because I'm going to save this into the machine so that later on I can pull it up and cut something with it. So it's um, reminding me. Um, okay, put material to scan on the mat, set it to the machine. All right, here we go. And now we're, um, my scanner level is in the right place. It's always going to ask you that on a scan and cut. There's a couple different places to put it. And now it's going to scan my 
sanitizer holder outline. And it'll pull it up in here. I hope you can see the screen. Okay, I could try to move you. Maybe that'll, that might be a little better camera angle. And it's, it's looking at it now and, and recognizing what it looked at. And there it is. So now I am, I don't want to change anything. So I'm going to process it and say, okay. And it's going to ask me, where do I want to save it? To my computer wirelessly, to a USB stick or to my scan and cut machine. And I'm just going to save it to my machine. And it'll come up and it'll tell me a file number for it. Um, number 38. So I'll say OK. And now it's saved. So now I'm going to go back home and I'm going to delete what it's looking at right now. It saved this image, but I'm just going to delete this most recent scan that it's looking at currently. And then I'm going to turn my, turn my um, design over and scan it again so that I have the reverse and then I'll work out my little back pocket. And I'll do the same thing on each of these next two scans. So I'm cutting out one whole sanitizer holder. This is marine vinyl. I scanned my stitched stabilizer and uh, got rid of all the noisy stuff on the scan. And uh, then I made the little back, the farthest back pocket and went ahead and put all three files on one scan and it's cutting. Since this is marine vinyl, it's going to cut through twice. I'm using the Scan and Cut DX 225. This is my fabric mat and my fabric cutter blade. Okay, we are done. So let's see what we got. So here's the back piece and here is the front piece. has just a little bit of painter's tape on there. I use a little painter's tape to hold this down. And there they are, they fit perfectly on top of each other. And here is my uh, little back pocket, which I'm gonna have to trim a little bit. I'll have to trim it across the top a little bit. It needs to be just a little bit shorter. And I'll take this off the side and it will fit on the back. All right. Now we can stitch. I'm using my large oval hoop and I'm gonna hoop up a piece of tearaway. And this is really papery tearaway. See, it's just really papery, so it'll tear real easy. So when I, when I put it in my machine and I start my placement stitch, I'm sort of half expecting it to tear it a little bit, but we'll see how it goes. I'll tighten this just, I usually tighten this with my little 
um, screwdriver. You know, the end, we've talked about that a lot of times, how the end has this little hole in it, and you can use it to tighten your hoops. And you want to be sure and burp the hoop. And when you burp a hoop, you just push it a little bit to the outside on the back, so you've got a little bit of a ledge there. And you want to make sure you have that all the way around. <clears throat> and get this tight. Yep, sounds good. <clears throat> Typically, you would always use two layers of stabilizer. But marine vinyl is awful thick, and I'm not sure how we're going to get through this. I guess we'll try it. Because regular, the regular vinyl that I've been using is quite a bit thinner. So we'll see how we get along. All right, let's go to the machine and stitch our placement stitch. using my red uh, bobbin case and for some reason my machine is complaining about it and I'm not using my thread cutter today because I don't want to have thread cutting little bumps on the back of my as you're going to see the back of it. I've got kind of a tangle on my bobbin here. Let me see if I can fix this. Sometimes you just have to talk nice to it. Let me see now if I can get this back. Get it threaded back up and see if it'll be happy. I'm using a blue thread so you can see the um, outline of the where I'm going to put my top part of my sanitizer holder. All right, now whenever you have something go wrong, we've we've talked about this in other videos too. But if you have something go wrong and um, you need to go back a few stitches. You just clear out. And right here, you've got this great big screen. Um, uh, you can see right where you're at. And the top knob right here, this top knob, is going to take you back. And you watch right here, and you'll see that we'll go back a few stitches. You see it says negative two, negative three, negative five, six, you can just go back as far as you want. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then you'll just hit go and you'll kind of be back where you started. design, I'm going to hold you up so you can see, on this design it's going to show you that I am now it wants to do step two and uh, which is the little lion but I needed a die line since I cut my vinyl first uh, instead of last so I need to go back one and do the die line or do the first step again so we'll go back one and uh, I will go ahead and put my vinyl on here and I'm gonna spray the back of my vinyl with a little bit of adhesive. So I'm gonna spray this, the back of it, with a little bit of Dritz basting spray. Very carefully, you don't wanna spray this all over the place. There we go. 
we'll just let that dry a minute. And we'll take it over and put it on our embroidery spot. Okay, let's see if we can get this baby stuck down. And I said before I didn't have my red bobbin case in. I think I said red. I should have said yellow. Sometimes it's called gold. Stick this down. Pretty good. And I've also changed my thread colors. I've changed to a kind of a beige tone to go with this color of marine vinyl. And now we're going to stitch this down. And when I cut my pieces out on my scan and cut, I left or I added uh, a little over an eighth of an inch. So this is all going to stitch inside here and we'll see how we get along here. Let's see, I want to bring my I want to bring my bobbin thread up if I can. There we go. All right. There we go. Now let's go. You always keep your fingers away, remember that. <clears throat> I'm just gonna kinda give it a little help here with the tips of my scissors, but I'm staying way, way back out of the way. I don't wanna get anything caught. I definitely don't wanna remember my fingers. size but it's a bigger needle okay so now we're going to switch threads because it's time to do the little lion and we want to do him in kind of a, a lion color so we'll get on some gold here and, uh, let's see how that would look that's kind of pukey looking let me see what else I can find I'll be right back Okay, I put in kind of a beige, sort of a beige, goldish tone. So we'll see how our lion looks with this. The little lion's face.
So now it's going to stitch out a placement line for the outside applique. And since a lot of you have been um, wondering about how applique works, this is how it works. And uh, it's the same on almost all projects that you do in the hoop with your embroidery module. It'll stitch out a line to show you where to put your fabric. And then you'll put your fabric down and it'll stitch the fabric down and then you'll trim it and then it'll come back and do the edge stitching. So here we go. This is uh, called a die line or a placement line. It's just so you can see where to put your fabric. scrap here from left over from a bag that I made. I do a lot of bag making so I've got scraps that are just perfect for two and a half inch squares and quilting and that and and these little guys. So I'm going to kind of just encourage this to lay flat. It's going to fit right on here and I'm going to stitch around it and then we'll trim it. You always keep your fingers and your tools back, way far away from the needle. take our uh, hoop out and trim this. Let me trim the back here. And I'll try to trim it on camera. Um, I might have to turn it a little bit. And I'll try to keep my hands out of the way. But I'm just using double curved scissors and I'm trimming just as close as I can to the, whoops, the stitching. Try to stay up in the where you can see this. All right. Let me see if I can do it this way on the other side. If you can kind of get a hold and pull this up a little bit, it really helps. Now let me get this out of the way. And I'll get the top. Let's see, I've got a little scraggler sticking out down here. I better get him off. Okay, we'll do the top. I'm going to cut this jump stitch while I'm here. There we go. Now, so the next thing it's going to do uh, is it's going to run the applique stitch around my piece of black starry fabric. And since I cut my threads, I'm going to pull my bobbin thread up. And away we go. Thank you. 
there is our um, the front part of our hand sanitizer holder is done. If I wanted to put an initial in here, I was just thinking, I would like to give this to my friend, Shirley, for um, just a little thank you gift for some things that she did for me. And I think I'll put her initial in here. And the way that we're going to do that, now there's probably a, several different ways to do it, but I, you don't you don't need software to do it this way. So let me see here if I can bring you up to my screen. Let's see. Tina, Tina showed you how to add things. Um, I guess it's in Tina's Tuesday tips. Let's see here. So we have to go back to our design and don't worry I can get right back into it where I want to go because remember remember where I was there whoops I don't want that there we go now and I've got to do this around the camera so hopefully I won't mess this up so here's my little plus sign so what do you what do you need if you're gonna add something you have to have a plus sign, right? So we're gonna add, and this is my USB stick, so I can't go there. So I need to go to my machine, to my um, uh, font file folder, and I'll pick a font, let's do this one. And her name is Shirley, so I'll pick capital S, and we'll call that good. And now I need to move it down so that it's pretty much in the middle of my design. That's pretty close. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. That looks pretty good. I might move it just a skosh over to the side. There. I kind of like that a little better. Okay. So now we'll send it to the machine. And there it is. And now we have to go through the steps to where we get up to what we just finished. So let's go to two. I've got to get up to where my um, text is highlighted. So that's what I'm going to stitch. It probably put it on at the very end. There we go. All right, now let me move the camera back where you can look back down and see where we're at. And we're gonna put Shirley's initial in here. So let me pull up my bobbin thread. Did I break my bobbin thread? Maybe I didn't. I don't remember anyway, we had quite a, I had quite a long way to go when it was jumping around there. So I'll see if I can Cut the right thread here. Okay. Now then, let's try to pull it up one more time and see if it'll let me. Woo, woo, tiny, tiny. Well, I don't think it'll let me. Okay, let's start. If I get a jam, we'll fix it. Shirley's initial.
these initial one. Oh, it looks nice. I like it. Okay, the next thing is going to be to put the back on and then we will stitch that down and then we'll do the outside pocket. Okay, I've sprayed the back of this with my sticky spray, my basting spray, and I'm gonna put it on the back of my hoop. This is the back, here's my front, and here's the back. So I've sprayed the wrong side of this and I'm just going to lay it in place over my front side and sort of press it down just lightly. Okay. So now I need some, let's see, I have to have some painter's tape. Hold on. Get some painter's tape out here. There we go. Put you back here where you can see. I'll put a little bit of painter's tape on here. Just to keep things looking safe and in place. And this marine vinyl is pretty thick. I don't know how this is going to end up. But I'm going to give it a good try. Let's slow my machine down now that I have a couple of different layers on here. One layer wasn't too bad, now we have two. And when we put our little back pocket on, which is this, we put our little back pocket on, we'll have three, plus the stabilizer. So I'm not sure how this will go. But I love my Bernina, and I'm pretty sure this is going to be okay. I've got faith in her. Okay, that should get us through. Okay, back to the machine. All right, there's the back. And here's the front. Let's see if we can get this on. And we're ready to do step seven. And I'm going to leave this gold thread in there. And we're going to see what happens. I want my bobbin thread up. And I've slowed my machine way down. I don't know if it'll actually slow down very much. Yep, I guess it will. I've really slowed it down because I don't want to hurry it through this. So this is going to take a little while to stitch around this and attach the back piece. stitch attaching the front and the back and now the the um, design is going to stitch a little registration mark here and here for us to line our pocket up on the back so we'll go ahead and do that and then we'll take the loop out and we will um, put the back pocket on and we're nearly done downhill slide on this thing and it's time to put the very back pocket on that holds the little um, hand sanitizer bottle in there. You can use one with a more 
pointy type end too. They both fit in this design. So I've cut this on my scan and cut. But remember I told you that I was gonna trim this top edge because I intentionally cut it too long. And since I'm not using my thread cutter, I have a perfect little line here with my jump stitch. So these are my registration marks. This is the back of my hoop. There's a front. This is the back of my hoop. And I have these wonderful little marks here and my jump stitch that goes across there. So I can see right where I need to cut my little back pocket. So I'm going to take a um, friction pen here and I'm just going to make a couple of marks and then I'm going to take my cutter, my rotary cutter and my ruler and trim this. And get it to where it looks pretty spiffy. Just a hair more. There we go. Okay, here we go. Yes, that's that. And now I'm going to just tape this on here. Before, you know, we sprayed with the basting spray, but you can't do that now because if you did, you would be sticking your pocket together. So I got my painter's tape tore down the middle here and I'm going to try to get it where it's back all in one piece. And don't worry if you sew over painter's tape. You can see I took it off the bottom here and it just comes right off. It's not a problem. Okay, let's see what we can do with this here. So I'm going to tape it across the top first. And this last stitch out is going to not only put down this back part of the pocket, but uh, it's going to do a really pretty stitch all the way around the whole design. This design is so nicely digitized. This is a wonderful design. And, um, you know, the, the lady, Tiffany, who, who did this design over at Crashing Waves, I want to thank her for giving me permission to do this tutorial and for joining the group and for doing such great work on her website with these wonderful embroidery designs. Okay, now, um, I want to mention here too, you can see that my, my stitches on here look really good. But sometimes when you're doing key fobs or um, something like this, where you've got a vinyl on this side and a vinyl on this side, you'll get really wonky stitches on the back. And that's because your vinyl is dragging a little bit. Um, you might need also, you, you know, it could be that you need to use um, a larger needle and that you need to slow your machine down. Um, and another thing that I have done in the past um, is put down some tissue paper on, on the bed of my sewing machine. Just the, the really inexpensive tissue paper wrapping paper that you get at dollar store or someplace. And just cut out a little hole where my uh, needle goes and just tape it down so that there's not any vinyl rubbing on metal on the on the bottom of my machine bed. So there's no drag. So there's a little tip for you. Okay, we're gonna go over and finish this little guy up. All right, I'm gonna pull up my bobbin thread and this will be my last go around 
and my bobbin thread is white, so on the back side of this, uh, when we're done, you'll see a little of the gold thread because it it's pulling it down and to the back. But um, I didn't want to uh, I didn't want to wind a bobbin with gold thread. I knew this would work, and I'll still be able to see the outline on the back side. So I'm just going to use white bobbin thread, and this is 60 weight bobbin thread and 40 weight uh, polyester embroidery thread in the needle. And I see that I've got some sticky on my needle. Let me see if I've got a, um, these are handy to keep by your machine all the time. You just never know. I was sewing through that painter's tape and I see that I got some goo on my needle. So I'll just wipe my needle off and be ready to go. Okay, there we go. Let's put this in the trash. And thread back up. And here we go. And I've slowed, slowed my machine way down. in my software, my Embrilliance. I uh, imported this design into my Embrilliance and uh, I lined up, I copied and pasted and lined up three of them to fit in my jumbo hood. So for, for uh, stitching these out for my Etsy shop so that I could go faster, be a little more efficient with my time, materials. Uh, I have it set up so that, that I can stitch three at a time in my jumbo loop. Okay, this is going to take six minutes, so we'll be back when we're just about done. Okay, we just finished up, so I will Trim my threads front and back, and we'll take it over to the my workstation and clean it up. And look at those beautiful stitches on the back; they look great. Everything looks really good. Okay, we'll go take it over to the workstation and clean it up, and we'll put in our rivets and um, put on the uh, key ring and a tassel.
by cutting my pieces on my scan and cut before I started stitching, I've saved an awful lot of vinyl. Um, you know, some vinyl just isn't all that uh, cheap to purchase. And, um, you know, if you're gonna be making several of these, I can't get that off, there we go. Several of these, it's always a good idea to preserve your materials. So I didn't waste, um, really, I didn't waste any vinyl because I um, lined everything up in my software on my scan and cut till they just cut right beside each other. So, okay, well, we'll see if we can get get our tear away out of here. And this is pretty soft tear away. Let me see here. Let me see, I think I'm better. Yeah, I guess I already did trim my, my jump stitch. Okay. The jump stitch will give you trouble if you don't cut that first. Okay, and you can see that it's a little wider in places on the outside and a little choppy here. And I can go in with my scissors and trim um, when we're all done. So, all right, let me get this out of here. I see some fuzz is sticking out that. There we go. Okay, looking good. Shirley's gonna love this. Let's see if our, uh, let's see if our hand sanitizer will fit. And yes, it does. Let's see where to put our rivet. I am gonna trim this up a little bit when I'm done. Just gonna trim these sides to where they're pretty straight. The rest of it I don't think is too bad a deal. All right, let me get my rivets and my keychain and tassel and be right back. So I'm just going to be using cam snaps. And to do that, you'll need two caps and a mommy snap and a daddy snap sure I, yep a mommy and a daddy and we'll, we'll put those on your cam cam snap press should come with um, an awl but typically most sewers have one um, and I'm I didn't mark this or anything I'm just aiming kind of I'm looking at this here and I'm just sort of aiming for the middle and I'm gonna go ahead and punch my hole. And I'll mess with it a little bit. And on the top, you put the, whoops, whoops, whoops. You put the cap on the right side out. And then I usually take my fingernails and really push it down so it's sticking up. And I usually put the daddy snap on that side. I'm gonna look at this, and since it's black, I have trouble seeing it. Yep, got the right one. And I'm gonna take my cam snap press, and I'll hold on, and it just goes right in this way. It slips right into the little holder, and then you press. And there it is. So now, I'll take my awl. Whoa, it didn't stay on. It didn't stay on. Maybe my vinyl's too thick. Well, we'll try it one more time. Hope that I can make this work. Well, I need a daddy one. 
another dad one out of here. Vinyl might be too thick. Yeah, I got it that time. Okay, back to square one here. Okay, now I need a little bit of a loop here, you know, so that it can go over the top of the um, bottle of hand sanitizer. So I'm going to center, sort of center this and make a little mark with it and you'll be able to see i think you can see there's a little mark right here and i'm going to put my dowel or my awl right in the middle of it but i'm not going to poke all the way through you don't want to go you know you just want to go through the back pocket not all the way through to the front or anything and now i need a cap and this time the cap goes on the bottom and the mommy part goes on the top so just like this and the way I do these you know it's a little bit fiddly to get your cam snap pliers in there so I just put one finger in the, or two in the bottom of the sanitizer holder. And that way I can feel that I'm down in the little groove. And there's my snap. Okay, so now we've got our snaps on. Let's get these guys out of the way. And I've got, I bought a bunch of tassels from Amazon. I'll put a link for you for that and I got I took out three and this one's kind of a gray ish color that's a cream and this one's kind of gold so I'm going to use this one because I like the gold kind of goes with everything else on here so we need a jump ring and the I use the um, jump rings that go around a couple times not the uh, kind that meet end to end and i just use my stiletto and real easy i open it and put my tassel on there and the little hole at the top of the keeper on the tassel isn't big enough for this to go around very far when you have your when you're working with your key ring. And these key rings, I got them from, I think I got these off Etsy, but I'll find the link and give you that too. But they have a little bullet on them. And so we're gonna open our, open up our jump ring again and slide it onto the bullet. See, it's just real easy to just slide your stiletto in there. See how far you can get that open. And your little bullet fit, fits right over it. If you can see what you're doing, it will. <laughs> and then I just slide it around until it hooks on. And there we go. Just about there. I might have to wiggle my tassel a little bit. There we go. Yes. It's going to be really pretty. Okay, there's that. And the way that I put the tassel on, I just kind of fold this in a little bit. And real carefully, I the key ring on the key ring not the tassel the key ring and so anyway there <laughs> that 
that's how it works. So there's our there's our pretty pretty keychain with our sanitizer holder. So I'm still going to do a little trimming and cleaning up. gonna go ahead and and put this in the mail to my friend Shirley so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you have a fun time making these have a good day everybody <laughs>